So you're interested in having a look around my personal residence and how I actually purchased that property, how I renovated it and what it actually looks like before and after. If that's the case, then let's go. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things UK buy to let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. So in June of 2020, I took Warren Buffett's advice, which is be greedy when other, others are fearful. We were in the middle of the pandemic and the world to most people was falling apart around us. So although buying a residential property actually wasn't on my to-do list or one of my goals for this year, it actually came to the very top and I decided to go for it and see if I could pick up a bargain. I actually purchased a bungalow in a very nice village around the area where I grew up. So I've got friends and family surrounded. The layout of the bungalow is fantastic and it actually needed a considerable amount of work doing to it. The bungalow was listed at 264,500. After some negotiation, some pretty hard negotiation, I managed to drive that price down to 245,000 pounds. So I purchased it on a residential mortgage. The property hadn't been touched for many years. One of the reasons why I was attracted to the property is because actually there's a property similar around the corner of layout and size, etc. However, it had just been recently renovated. And the price that this one was on the market at the current time was for £350,000. Now we're a year down the line and I'm pretty sure that the property, my property and the property around the corner will be worth well on more to about £400,000. On the 14th of August, I managed to get my hands on the keys, got myself into the property and then the work commenced. Okay, so here we are. Let's get in. Let's have a look. So I've certainly got my work cut out with this one, but it's an exciting project this because it's going to be my residential property. Make sure you stick with me throughout the journey and I'll keep you updated as we go and maybe give you some handy hints and tips as well on how to renovate a property. We're now a month into the project, well just shy of a month, um, and we've certainly been doing a little bit of bashing, we've been doing some cutting out, pulling out, stripping out, and the place is now pretty much a bare shell ready for us to start rebuilding. So I'm going to give you a bit of a tour around, give you a bit of an indication of what we've done before we start then building up and I show you as it all comes together. Here in the lounge you can see all the wallpapers come off. We've started chasing into the walls now. Um, TV's going to be going on there. There was a nasty archway, which I'm sure I showed you before actually, that has now come out of that wall. Um, plaster is actually coming in over the weekend and he's going to plaster over all of the ceilings for me, which um, will make the place start looking a lot better. But you can see the chase in there for the radiators to come. Kitchen's going well now, ready for the electrician to come in and start doing the first fix of electrics um, and for the plasterer to start filling the plaster, uh, filling the holes almost where um, the kitchen's not going to go. With regards to the kitchen, um, I've actually got it over to two designers at the moment who are going to come back with some ideas for me. I've got a pretty good idea of what I want myself, but I'm really interested in what the professionals come back with um, and then we'll start going from there, getting some quotes and some prices. You can see that we've got the concrete now where the ensuite drain is. So this is here in the kitchen, which runs out of the back door. I'll actually just show you what it looks like outside the back door here, because that's been finished off as well. So you can see that we've put a manhole in there just because we put a bit of a joint um, and that runs all the way through the house. It then runs through here in the hallway and then into where we've got a bit of a hole here, into the bedroom where the ensuite's going to be as well. 
So this brings us into the ensuite. Again, we've got the chasing done. Um, ceiling's been completely stripped out. Everything's been stripped out, really. Um, we're ready for the plasterer to come in now and start doing the ceiling for us. Once that's been done, we can start putting the framework up, so the studded wall for the ensuite, and get the Sparky to do the first fix of electrics in here as well. Archway's all been tidied up, ready for the plasterer to come through. The ceiling's in the hall already as well. Into bedroom number two. Again, we've got the chasing ready. The ceiling's good and ready to go. The walls are all stripped now, ready to go. The flooring's been dusted off, so ready for plastering and ready for the sparky. Now, bedroom number three, I've actually taken the door out there. I'm gonna put the door just here from this frame uh, over to this wall here, which would give me a ensuite toilet in an office space, which is gonna be going in here. So you can see again, this room has been completely stripped out. Uh, windows are on order, so they shouldn't be too long as well to get those changed over. Uh, we've got the chasing done for another pipe, uh, for another electric socket going in there, and then also the pipe works so and the water down for that radiator as well. We then got the toilet just here, um, which has been completely stripped out and looking like it's pretty much ready to go as well. A little bit more work in there. We've got to just put that little radiator in, but looking good and ready to go really. Hallway's all been chased as well. If we can see just behind the garage door just here, that chasing is nicely put into that wall, ready for a stand-up radiator. That then brings us over into the bathroom where we've got a little bit more work to do. Um, so these walls are obviously just going to be tidied up a little bit before the plasterer comes in. Get the plasterer on the ceiling to fill all that as well. Um, and then look at this, a fancy little hole, a bit of a recess in the wall there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but I'm sure I could probably make some use of it. So the wall's going really well. The next jobs on the list is I'm actually going to brick up one of the windows, the small window next to the back door in the kitchen so I can get the units flush against the wall. I'm also going to brick up a window in the garage as well, just for security reasons. Once we've got that done, Plaster is going to sort out the ceilings, the ceilings throughout the property for me, and I'm going to get the electrician in to put all the first fix of electrics in. I'm then going to get my plumber in to start dropping all of those um, pipes down the walls for me, ready to put the radiators on and just to get the heating in in order before I then get the plasterer back to do all of the walls for me. So I've got the piping in for the radiators now. I've boarded over the old boiler door there, so we're just ready now for it to be skimmed. We've got the pipes here. I've actually now marked where the down lights are gonna go so my electrician can get those. Again, just leaving notes. So for the spot, uh, for the electrician to get rid of old wires, for the plasterer so he knows exactly where to go. I've also then started working um, quite a lot actually on the ensuite. So drains are now there, toilet's already been plumbed in. Um, this system here allows me to bury the system really in the wall, so I'm gonna have a wall hung toilet and sink. Shower's gonna go at the end here with a small recess, uh, just for shampoo bottles, etc. that kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously you've got the shower fitting just here. So we're all boarded out, um, ready to start plastering in here. Just got a couple more boards to put up. And then if you just want to take a look from the other side, I've just started to insulate it from the back here. And again, my plumber's been in um, and just started doing the wiring. Now I'm actually going to leave the back of this open um, whilst I finish off that ensuite, just in case, um, well, just because I need to see really, just to make sure everything's in place and everything's all working. Once I've got the ensuite sorted, I'm then going to move over into the master bathroom. So you can see here that I've started just to chalk it out. Um, so my builder's going to pop in and do that drain down there for the shower for me, also for the bath here. So I'll need a plug in the centre. I'm going to shift that toilet around actually. So we're going to put the drain here um, and put, move the wall forward slightly so I can put all of the pipe work um, behind the wall. Then I'm actually going to keep half of that tray, that, ash, uh, that hatch there um, and use it as a mirror um, just above the sink area. So I'm also going to be moving the sink around from where it was. So we've got the first fix of the electrics in now. So we've got cables hanging down everywhere. Um, and also as well, we've started actually now filling in the holes from the first fix um, of the plumbing as well. Really happy with how the on switch look in here, ready to be plastered now. Um, so that's all good to go. Some work to do in the bathroom tomorrow. I'm just gonna get this shower sorted and then boarded up with moisture board. And then on this wall here, where we're just bringing 
this wall slightly out, there's gonna be a mirror um, in that center frame there and just a, a shelf and a mirror. And then we're gonna put the toilet frame in tomorrow. Um, and again, we're gonna have a, a floating toilet and a floating sink in here. Um, and then actually a, a standalone bath that just goes, it uh, stands on its own, but then it goes up against the wall. So we're gonna pop that in there as well. Mid-November now, so pretty much, I would say maybe halfway through the project. Still lots to do, the place is still looking like a building site. Um, but some paint has started going on the walls. I've got some plaster on the walls, uh, bathroom and ensuite and kitchen are now looking far better than they were when we we're ready to get some trades coming through. Um, so getting the tiler in uh, to do the floors and the walls, etc. So I'll give you a bit of a look around. Why am I sat here at the moment? Uh, I just wanted to show you actually that it's, it's not all as glamorous as it made out. There's some long days, lonely days in these properties, no heating, I've got no lights at the moment, got the radio playing, um, but I'm here, yeah, sort of sanding down um, this long corridor, this long hallway, and making sure that I can get the mold um, off the walls uh, just before I then start sanding it down. So let me give you a tour anyway and show you whereabouts I'm at. The lounge isn't mu looking much different at all, really. Um, got the lights uh, down there now, just need the plasterer to come through um, and do the ceiling for me and do this join where um, that archway was, if you remember at the start of the video. I have got my kitchen delivered, um, which is what you see there in the lounge. Uh, let me just swing around for you and show you the dining room. Um, so dining room, I rubbed this down uh, as of yesterday and we've actually got the ceiling um, in the dining room painted. Um, well, it's got the uh, watered down coat of emulsion on it, which goes straight onto the plaster. Um, and then I've rubbed down the rest of the wall, so we're gonna get those painted soon enough. Got no flooring, obviously, at the moment. Kitchen is looking a lot better to when you actually last saw it. Um, so again, we've got the watered down emulsion, uh, first fix of the lights and all the electrics there that you can see. Still waiting for the windows. That's been over about two and a half months now, what with COVID slowing things down. Um, still waiting for the door. So I'm hoping that they come pretty soon so I can get them in before then obviously we start fitting the kitchen. Hallway that I'm actually rubbing down today, which is an absolute joy, which takes us then into the master bedroom. Now, nearly got there actually with the master bedroom. Um, just been doing this back of this stud wall um, and getting all the plumbing in ready for the ensuite. So that's pretty much ready to go now. I'm just actually gonna leave that wall open while we fit the ensuite, just to make sure that, sure that everything's okay. Um, ceiling has been plastered in here um, and painted with the watered down emulsion paint. All the walls have been rubbed down, so they're ready for painting. Still waiting for the window in here. Um, got the all the electrics for the TV ready to go, so all the data. Um, Sockets, double socket, the data points, etc., um, and then into the ensuite. Now, the ensuite was looking good, and actually, as of today, I was due to have the uh, the tiler come in um, and do the cubicle at the back there that you see. However, fitted the shower tray last week and stood on it once and came across this crack which is really, really annoying. So the plumber installed it for me. I then stood on it just to check the shower arm um, and the shower tray cracked. And they can't deliver another one now to me until the 11th of December. So I've got to wait, well, just over a month um, to get another shower tray, tray, which is really annoying. Coming on into the bathroom, the shower tray in here is now fitted. Um, which is great, and that's ready to go. We've got some moisture resistant board um, on the back of the cubicle here, where Tyler's gonna come in and again, just tile the cubicle. I've managed to get the tap um, into the wall here that's gonna sit above the freestanding bath, and all the walls are now, well, the wall is now boarded up with the, tea, uh, the toilet system. Uh, we've got the sink and we've got the radiator in there. Um, I've also got a bit of an ingress there where I'm gonna put a mirror on the back of it actually, and then you can just see some small plinth lights I've actually used to give a little bit of lighting down there on that mirror. Second bedroom, ceiling's been done, walls have been rubbed down. 
Uh, still waiting on a window, as in every room. Um, we're just gonna pop some, uh, a coat of paint on this wall, on these walls now, um, which should get us in a lot better position um, in this room. But it's looking good and it's nearly ready to go. We then come down and, which is what's gonna be, well, it's bedroom three, which is going to be my office. Um, and in here, pretty much in the same state, the ceiling's been done, we've got the first fix of the lights. We are just missing the window at the moment, but the place has been rubbed down um, and it's ready for a lick of, uh, a lick of paint, uh, just to see where we're at with it really. I just wanna put that initial coat of paint on it because that will then allow me to see if there are any more holes um, or any blemishes at all, anything within the walls for me then to fill again and rub down if it's needed. Now where this toilet actually was, I changed my mind actually last minute. I'm actually gonna take that toilet out and brick up that window um, and just use it as a cupboard. There isn't actually a cupboard within the property um, because I got rid of that old boiler cupboard and turned it into an ensuite. So I'm actually gonna use this for, you know, the hoovers, the dusters, etc., that kind of stuff. I was hoping to be in by Christmas, but it doesn't really look like it's gonna happen, to be honest. Bit of a setback with that shower tray. I was hoping that the tiler would be in this week and then I could kit out and fit out the bathroom and the ensuite and then move on to the kitchen. Also as well, my kitchen fit has actually come down with COVID, believe it or not. So I've got a crack shower tray, I've got a builder who's gonna do my kitchen for me who's come down with COVID. So I might actually jump on and just do that myself because it'll be easier. But what I really need is the windows and doors fitting. So then when my tiler comes in and does the floors, then we're not messing around afterwards. So we're gonna have to see how it plans out, but everybody who's anybody in the trade at the moment is busy, absolutely round. So it's difficult to get everybody in order for when you need them. So we're just coming into New Year now, actually. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update. There's been quite a bit of progress. I've actually taken a month um, out to be able to actually work on this uh, on this bungalow. So I'll just give you a quick tour around um, and kind of show you where we're at at the moment. So it doesn't look like we've done a great deal on the land, but you will notice all of the walls now have been painted. I'm still waiting for the plasterer, who's due in in two weeks time now, actually. Um, to do the ceiling for me and that gap um, where there was that archway down the middle there. But other than that, um, well, obviously putting the flooring down and then popping the skirting on as well. The reason why I took the skirting off in here is I'm actually gonna put a vinyl floor down in the dining room at the back there. Um, so I'm gonna have to raise these skirting boards slightly. And also just down in the corner, um, there was a bit of, well, it looks like ants. Um, so I've had to drag all of that out and I'm gonna fill that before we put the skirting boards back on. Obviously still is just to refit the radiator, but we haven't been able to do that just yet because I need my plasterer actually just to skim over all of these chases for me. You will notice the windows have gone in. There was a little bit of issues with the windows um, that when they put the beading on around the edge, there was gaps um, in all of the beading. So you can see there now there's a bit of a hairline gap, um, but actually on some of them, I'll drop some photos in here, um, where there was really big gaps in the window. So I just had the window guys come back and sort that for me. You'll notice on the floor that I've got the bathroom tiles laid out. So these are for the bathroom and the ensuite. Um, and the reason why I've got them laid out here is because I've just um, sealed them ready to go down. So when the, plast uh, when the tiler um, actually puts them down, if he does drop anything on them at all, it should be easily to just wipe off and not actually mark the tiles. So coming over into the dining room, we're pretty much in the same place. It's all been painted. The French doors have gone in, which is great. Um, just need that skirting down, we need the flooring down and we need all the chases doing as well. Now we have actually got the lights up in here and the ceilings been plastered and painted, um, which is really good. Kitchen side of things, we're good to go. I'm um, gonna start working on that today um, and get some of the, those units in um, to try and prepare because I'm having the kitchen floor tiled as well. So I just need to get that ready for the tiler. The tiler's actually in at the moment um, doing some work, which I'll show you in a second. So hallway, um, we've now got the door in, which is looking absolutely brilliant. Hallways all ready for some skirting, the wooden floors. Gonna have a stand-up radiator um, going in just here. A bit of work for the plasterer down there. Um, just coming down uh, the hallway into the master bedroom here. So Tyler has actually started, which is fantastic. He's just got to do a little bit of grout in there, um, in that ingress, and then that should be done. So once he's out, then I can start sort of fitting the bathroom um, and getting that one finished off. Master bedroom is pretty much ready to go. I've actually left this wall off um, just because I'm not overly confident, to be honest, 
because everything is in the stud wall, I wanted to fit the bathroom first of all, make sure that everything's all sorted, everything's all good, and then I'll board over that back wall and then get the plasterer to skim it for me as well. But again, just waiting on the plasterer um, to come and do the chases for me. Once he's done all the chases and filled all the holes, then we should be able to turn these rooms around pretty quickly. Coming into the bathroom, we had a major incident with the bathroom in the fact that this wall here, um, as you actually stood and looked at the shower cubicle, the top of it bowed out by about 23 to 26 mils. So quite a distance. Now, some suggestions were to fill the gap down the side um, here and just put the tiles so they actually follow the wall. But what I decided to do was actually take all of that wall out, take it back to brick and then plasterboard it over with moisture board and then fill it. So now we've got a nice straight wall that the tiler can continue um, doing that shower cubicle. Other than that, the bathroom is pretty much ready to start fitting once the tile has been through. He's gonna do the floor for me, he's gonna do the cubicle, um, and then I can come in and start actually fitting that bathroom. Bedroom number two um, is pretty much, yeah, same state as number one, really. Um, all good to go, really. We just need the plaster to come in, get rid of those chases for me, um, and then this room should be, yeah, pretty much good to go. We do have the builder's toilet at the back here, um, most disgusting room in the house. Uh, it does still need plastering out. I've had a window filled in there. Um, I'm going to plaster this one out and actually use it as a cupboard and then this would go into my office here. Um, so again, just waiting on the plasterer once the plasterer has been through. So his plasterer is actually going to go down and do all around all of the inside of the windows for me as well um, and obviously sort out all of the chases. So here we are at the six month point. Um, in the bungalow project. So I'll give you a bit of a tour around just so you can uh, see exactly where we're at. We're at a few complications, a few bumpy roads along the way, but it's starting to come together now, which is really, really exciting. So let me give you a bit of a tour around. Here in the lounge that we've now finally got the ceiling uh, plastered as well as the old arch, which was there. In the dining room, pretty much ready to go, which is looking good. We've just got this chase still drying with plaster here, um, which is where the um, vertical radiator is gonna go. But doors in and now plastered around the door, which is absolutely fantastic. Let me just take you back so you can see what the lounge looks like. Then if we just come around over into the kitchen, you can see we've got the kitchen fitted now. So we've been doing some work on that and I've actually just been working on putting that microwave and oven in today. They got delivered last night. But unfortunately, we had a little bit of a snag this morning where I managed to put my drill um, through the piping you can see just there where the stand-up radiator goes in the kitchen, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's fine. Into the hall, really excited that um, managed to get one of the stand-up radiators uh, in yesterday. Had around the door plastered as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And just moving on down the hallway into the master bedroom. So we've actually got the plastering done in here, the window's been done and the chase has been done. So we're just waiting for that to dry. And here's where I'm currently working at the moment. So you can see now that we've got the tiles up in the shower cubicle. I fitted all the um, shower stuff yesterday. Just need to put the extractor fan in up there. But now we've got the sink in and the toilet flush. Managed to get the um, cabinet up yesterday as well. Um, we've just got a slight issue with the radiator um, in the fact that the pipes are just slightly too far apart. So I'm just working with my plumber to see what he wants to do on that. And then we'll think of a best course of action. Coming round and through into the bathroom, you can see now that we've also got the tiles down. The cubicle has been tiled as well. Um, I managed to actually get some of the shower fitted yesterday. I'm just gonna seal that in, uh, put some sealant around it now. Looking good, really. I've got the bath tap um, in here as well. And actually today, just got this towel rail up, which is absolutely brilliant. Over into bedroom number two. Um, just, well, Chase waiting for that to dry, really. Not a great deal going on in here. But if we then move down into where my office is gonna be, you can see that we the new door frame that we put in has been plastered around and then coming into the office itself. We've now got the window plastered up, the chase has been plastered up, that new socket has been plastered up, and also the doorway as well, so where we took the old door out. So definitely getting there now, um, six months in, and hopefully in the next couple of months, you'll start seeing some real progress.
Let me tell you about a massive mistake that I've made and why you should always overorder on tiles. So I've ordered some tiles for my kitchen floor, 600 by 600, so some big hefty tiles. I counted out, worked out with the measurements, etc., exactly how many I would need, and then I overordered only by a couple thinking that there'll be big tiles, everything will be fine, um, the tiler will get them sorted, he's already done my bathrooms for me, so I know he's quite capable, um, so we'll get cracking with that. Let me show you what's happened. So my full kitchen here, underneath all of these um, bits of cardboard and sheets on the floor, the whole of the kitchen has been tiled. Now, when I ordered the tiles, I didn't expect or particularly want my tiler to go underneath where the washing machine's gonna go and also where the dishwasher's going to go. So my two spare tiles um, are actually down on the floor there. So the tilers obviously come from the wall all the way across and over, filled those two holes. He's then got to the very end of the kitchen just over here and he's just a tile or two um, short with a couple of put cup cutoff points. So I've gone back to the company um, and ordered another set of tiles and we're about three to four weeks after my initial order. Anyway, they've sent me out um, the new tiles. Let me just show you what that looks like. So box number one is this one just here and this is box number two, which means that when my tile has gone and laid, the final missing tile, you can see that it's a completely different color. So I guess my options now are either live with the fact that I've got a different coloured tile in my kitchen floor that I wanted to be nice and shiny and clean and bright. Um, alternatively, I go and get the hammer and the chisel and start knocking it up, chuck it all in the bin and start again. Whose fault is this? Well, to be honest, I think it's my fault really. Um, in the fact that I didn't overorder. Yes, I was trying to scrimp and save a little bit. I put full trust into the tiler. I didn't tell him actually that I didn't want a tile underneath the washing machine or the dishwasher. And actually in hindsight, looking at it now, I probably do want a tile underneath them to be able to slide the appliance in and out. Otherwise, there'll be a bit of a drop and it'll be a problem in the future. So he was right to go underneath there. I guess my question would have been is, could he have counted them to make sure that actually he got to the end of the kitchen, just that one tile, and then potentially we could have used the other ones underneath the washing machine and dishwasher. But you know what? He wasn't to know, I should have ordered more tiles. He did break one as well, actually, which would have been that last one. And then the odd bits would have just been cutoffs of the other and I would have made it. But then I shouldn't really have expected him to be that tight um, on the amount that can be laid. So yeah, whose fault? I think it's my fault, to be honest. But I've lived and learned because I've now got the labor of taking all these up and I've got the cost of buying the new ones. And then of course, paying the tiler to lay the kitchen again. So here it is, here's the 286 pounds for just the tiles that have now been ripped up off the floor. Let me show you these. So as you can see, they've all now come up. Some of them actually uh, came up whole. Then we've got the part bits over here as well. But yeah, the floor's, um, well, now back to a place where we've got to scrape all this concrete off before I then uh, get my tiler to come back in um, and lay another floor that's going to cost me exactly the same, so 286 quid, um, I think it was. And then, of course, you know, for the labour of the tiler, putting them down as well. So the joys of renovations, eh? Well, that's got that done. Looking much better, right? So we're about ready for the tiler to come back for a second time. Second time lucky, hopefully, on this one. Okay, here we go. So in the office, we're looking pretty good now. Just got to get the radiator on, uh, second coat around that window there, and also just put a double socket there. Um, but, oh, and I've got to attach the light switch, but looking pretty good in the office. So that then just leads me to go around with a gl gloss brush around all of these skirtings. And then of course, around these door frames as well. So I've just actually had what's gonna be the new cupboard plastered. So plaster has been in for the final time, which is brilliant. So just gotta wait for that to dry and get some paint on it. Um, and then starting to come through the hall, you can see we've just still got a bit of painting to do, um, but definitely getting there now. Like most of the chases have now been filled in and painted over. Just struggling a bit with this bathroom ceiling. It's become a real pain in the ass, to be honest. 
um, put the bathroom paint on it and it started flaking off. So I've actually had to take it all off, which is really not ideal because the rest of the bathroom is actually done. So I'm just working out what's best to do because I did put the Dulux paint back on it. It's actually this stuff. So if I can help you out with anything at all, it is avoid that stuff like the plague. Um, so yeah, I need to put something back on it that's actually gonna stick. Moving into bedroom number two. Again, looking really good now. So paint's gone on. We just need to put the radiator here. Um, these windows have been painted, just need a little cleaning off around the side there. But looking really, really good. So again, just on the skirting boards, just need to do a little bit of glossing. Um, and then this room's sort of good to go, really. If we then head into the master bedroom, um, it's a little bit darker in here because the lights aren't working just yet, but we're in the same position really. Um, I've just had this ensuite wall uh, plastered, which was again the final job um, along with that cupboard of the plasterer. So once that dries out and we get that painted, then this room will start looking really, really good. Kitchen has uh, got back to basics now, so we're waiting for the tiler to come back through. Uh, just need to do a bit of painting around this back door. The window's been painted now, which is absolutely brilliant. And also uh, managed last week as well to get that um, chimney hood up, um, which is brilliant. So we need the tiler to come back in. And then actually next week as well, I've got the worktops being measured up. So hopefully we can get them in within the next couple of weeks or so. And then over into the lounge, ready for a radiator on the wall just here. The next other radiator is going underneath the window, which we're also ready for. Just got to do a little bit of electrics there where the TV point's going. But ceiling's all painted now and I can put those lights in. So we're looking good. We're getting there now for sure. We're now, what's the date today? So we're on the 18th of February. Um, so two months into the new, new year um, and into the project by about, what, six and a half, seven months or so. Um, but I'll keep you posted. So we're now mid-March and the kitchen floor has gone back down and all the tiles are the same, which is great. Kitchen work surface has gone in, we've got the hob in, sink is yet to be plumbed in. Um, but yeah, kitchen is really getting there now. It's been pretty good in the bathroom now. We just need to tile this window sill um, and gonna tile um, that recess there and put a mirror at the back of it. And then we're just short and shy at the moment of putting the screen up on the shower there. But other than that, we're looking pretty good and we're actually almost there with the bathroom, which is great. And here we go again, same issue in the bathroom, but now the paint's starting to come off down the walls. So you can see there that I rubbed that little bit down yesterday um, and painted over it with um, a mist coat of paint, so just watered down paint but you can see now that it's actually starting to come across the wall as well. So this paint is an absolute pain in the arse. Whereas the ceiling, what I actually did was strip off all of the paint and then paint it with a different paint, which is absolutely fine. So really managing to fire through the jobs now and get everything up and sorted. However, um, now we're getting to the stages of putting everything in and rebuilding the property. It seems that everything just keeps going wrong. Check this out first of all. So I ordered a new, brand new fridge freezer once I fitted it and got it in there. It's an integrated one. Um, this is what the bottom of it looks like. And then also just on the side here as well, you can see a bit of a dint. I got hold of the company um, and they actually said to me that they would um, typically, because of the dent on the side and only the dent on the side, because the other bit um, is inside the fridge freezer. So that's, you know, that's just hard luck, which I honestly couldn't believe. They said they would typically be able to swap it for me and send me another one. However, they haven't got any in, in store at the moment, so I can have my money back, um, or I can have £35 off, or I can have an extra year on the warranty. Because I really need a fridge freezer, um, I've decided to try and clean it up myself and just taken the £35. Bit disappointing. And then on to the next problem. So. I've then fitted all of my uh, stand-up radiators, which is brilliant, but check this out. So, and the one in the kitchen, just up here now, right on the internal bit there of the radiator, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's water leaking out, which has obviously got a hole in the radiator, um, and it's, yeah, dripping onto the problem number three. I went to put the sink in, and check there this we out. Go. I've just noticed that hairline crack in the sink as well, so, Things don't get any easier. Actually also forgot to tell you, I got um, the boiler fitted the other day and we pressurized the pipes. Um, there's water running down the inside of the ensuite, so I'm gonna have to open up the wall and find out where that issue is. 
And then also there was a big leap just up in the top corner here of the dining room. When I've been up there, I'll pop the photos in the video, it turns out that my friendly mice have been chewing through the pipes. Um, so this is the second time it's happened now. The first time I actually caught it uh, before we pressured the pipes um, and we rebandaged them up, we, we patched them up and put a bit of a, um, a join in there. But it seems like they've also chewed this bit in the corner of the dining room um, and it's so close to the wall, I'm not actually sure if we can get in there and put another join and actually fix it. Alternatively, I'm gonna have to go up through the corner of the roof here, through the wall, through the corner to make some space so we can actually fix that pipe. So today's gonna to be floor day. Um, never actually done one of these before. I've just got it laid out here. Um, so putting this vinyl floor, quick step vinyl floor um, into the dining room. So a little bit nervous, a little bit excited. Things do keep going wrong. Um, so let's see if we can actually get this floor down um, with everything going all right. Um, as of yesterday, I think in the last clip, I showed you guys uh, the kitchen radiator actually behind me here um, that was leaking. And now behind me here, you can see in the, um, in the hallway there, um, that radiator is also leaking as well from the very top point, just up here where the, the radiator actually is welded onto the bracket. Um, so yeah, far from ideal, but trying to get these issues sorted. Bit of a look at the kitchen, um, which is well underway now. We've just got to get the plinths on and the sink in really. Um, but looking really good now um, and really, really impressed with this. Um, yeah, it went in relatively smoothly. It's a Strada um, white gloss kitchen um, with black appliances, obviously. Um, that sink has now been replaced. I think I showed you in the last clip that uh, had a crack in it. So yeah, we, we're getting there now. Just as I've nearly got the place ready for carpets actually, I've noticed down at the front skirting board, at the front of the property here, just where the skirting board's gonna go, we started to see some damp patches just sort of creeping up on the wall. And I'll just show you down here. So you can see here where it's just slightly damp. So what I've actually done is just taken off um, the old plaster and taken out some of the um, the wet bricks which was starting to show through um, so what I'm going to be doing is putting down some tanking slurry just to really secure that area um, before then putting some uh, over plaster over it just before the skirtings go on so hopefully it will solve the issue. Just when you think you get to the end and all the problems are finished I've just noticed on the window just here there's a small crack so I presume that must have been when they were changing over the trims for the window and they didn't fit properly and he was hitting it with a rubber mallet. But yeah, I've got a crack in my window now. So I've just gone back to the guy that fitted them and just asked him how I go about getting a window changed. So we're now the 15th of April and the project is, well, soon to be coming to a close, hopefully. Carpets have now been ordered and we've got about a month before they come in. So you can see now actually just behind me, that we've got the dining room floor down, skirting boards have gone down. If I just sort of turn around here, you can see the lounge floor just needs preparing and I've noticed a bit of damp down there, so we're just sorting that underneath the window. But this lounge floor needs preparing ready for the carpets. And then if you look behind me down into the hall there, you can see that the vinyl flooring runs all the way through. And then the kitchen, we need to get some plinths on there. So I'll just turn this around so you can have a look. delivery of the doors this morning which is really exciting. I've got eight normal doors going throughout the property and then one fire door which is going between the property and the garage. Now actually only four out of those nine doors need to go back to Howden's because in my opinion they're damaged. So there's a staple sticking out of one of them, there's a bit of a scratch down another one, one of them's got a crack um, or a big ding down the side of it. Um, and then another one, you can see the glue splatters um, where they put the front sort of casing on. You can actually see the doors behind me here, solid, solid wooden doors. 
Um, so yeah, out of those nine, I'm just gonna send four of them back and get them replaced. So pretty standard practice really when you're doing these properties that every single thing that you order and everything you do seems to go wrong. But that's quite the norm. So the blinds have just gone up and we can put a tick in the bathroom box. Looking absolutely brilliant. I'm really happy with this room now. Don't get me wrong, it's taken some work and there's been a few ups and downs, but it's looking absolutely brilliant now. Last thing I wanna do is have a shower and get washed in here, just in case I mess anything up at all. You'll notice there that I did keep that mirror, um, which I'm really happy about. That's a model, well, that's a, a feature of the old house, which, which really does please me um, that I've managed to keep something from how the property was before. So here we are, it's exactly two weeks off a year since I put the offer in on this property that I purchased. And we're now nine months and two weeks into the refurbishment project and I'm about to move in at the weekend. So let me just give you the grand tour. There you go, nine months worth of graft and I'm actually gonna be moving in this weekend. I cannot wait. Make sure you stick around for the next clip where I'll go through the numbers and let you know exactly how much this project cost. So as we know from the start of the video, the property was on the market for 264,500 and I managed to negotiate that down to 245,000 pounds, which was an absolute steal. I didn't actually pay any stamp duty on the property because at the time we had a stamp duty holiday, which is another reason why I jumped on the opportunity at the time to pick up this property. I ended up putting down 36,750 as a deposit I paid £415 for a survey and I paid £216 for insurance. Now, if I take that full renovation cost, so that's everything including, including the white goods, the cooker, the oven, etc., the sink, things to get the property to a level before I've put any furniture into the property, the total cost came to £38,819.95 meaning that the total amount that I've actually put into this property so far is 76,202.76. But I'm super confident that my property has gone from being worth 245,000 pound when I purchased it to actually being more definitely in excess of 350,000. Because if you can remember, before I purchased the property, one had already sold around the corner for 350,000 pounds and we're now in a property boom. So I'm really convinced that I've added more than 100,000 pounds to this property. Thank you so much for watching and following me through this journey. If you found anything useful, helpful, or even entertaining, make sure you give me a thumbs up. It just helps others find the video like you have today. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.